Hi everyone and welcome to LearnNeuroRadiology.com. I'm Brent Weinberg. Today we're going to go through some short neuroradiology cases to help you review for your board exam. We're going to go through them quickly. We're going to call this the FAST10 Neuroradiology Case Review. This is going to be divided into a couple of different videos. In each video we're going to have 10 cases. We're going to go through about one case per minute. So this is going to be a great way to go through a bunch of cases fast as you get ready for your exams. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so as I just mentioned in this video, we're going to go through 10 neuroradiology cases. For each case, we're going to have a few images and a multiple choice question. I'll give you a few seconds to look at those images, think about the answer, then we'll have a quick review of the diagnosis and the answer. Now, if you're interested in longer versions of these cases, they are available on the board review playlist. So if you want to check those out with a longer explanation and more images, you can definitely do that. But this is for the purposes of quick review. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and begin. So case number one here is a 50 year old man with memory loss. We've got two images here. You've got an axial flare and a coronal flare. Your choices are Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, Bichette's disease, shy Drager syndrome, and Alzheimer's disease. I'll give you a few more seconds just to think about that. So the answer to this case is Huntington's disease. The reason this is Huntington's disease, if you take a look, their caudate and patamen are abnormal bilaterally. You have atrophy and abnormal T2 hyperintensity, which you can see here. On the coronal, you can appreciate that the distance between the caudates is increased here, so the intercaudate distance is increased. Uh, Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disease that's passed by a series of trinucleotide repeats. A lot of times there'll be a family history of abnormal movements or early dementia. Genetic testing is available for this. Case two, the history is a 70 year old man with Parkinsonian symptoms. Here you have a sagittal flare, an axial flare. Your choices are Pick's disease, multisystem atrophy, progressive supranuclear palsy or PSP, or Lewy body disease. So this is a case of PSP or progressive supranuclear palsy. What you can see here is there is abnormal concavity of the upper border of the midbrain. This is the so-called hummingbird sign, which is from loss of volume in the midbrain. On axial images, how this appears is widening of the interpeduncular cistern, which gives the midbrain a Mickey Mouse sort of appearance here with widening of that interpeduncular cistern. PSP is a Parkinson plus syndrome that has a worse prognosis than PD. It doesn't respond uh, similarly to medications or deep brain stimulation or other treatments. So it has a progressively bad outcome. Case three has the same history as the previous case, 70 year old man with Parkinsonian symptoms. Your choices are the same as well. Pick's disease, MSA, PSP, Lewy body disease. These images, you have an axial flare, you have an axial T2, So the answer in this case is MSA or multisystem atrophy. Uh, the reason for that is you have the classic uh, ant mini kind of sign here, which is the hot crossed bun sign, which is abnormal T2 hyperintensity through the pons in the shape of a cross, which is like the pastry, the hot crossed bun. You also see that there's cerebellar atrophy, uh, atrophy of the cerebellar peduncles as well. Like PSP, MSA is a Parkinson plus syndrome that has a worse prognosis than Parkinson's disease, is more rapidly progressive, and doesn't respond to conventional treatments. Case four is a 49 year old woman with confusion and hallucinations. We have two diffusion weighted images here one through the basal ganglia, one through the centrum semiovalley. Your choices are carbon monoxide poisoning, diffuse hypoxia, Alexander disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD. This is a case of CJD or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. What you see on these images here is abnormal diffusion appearance of the basal ganglia, including the caudate and patamen. You see abnormal appearance of the thalamus in this hockey stick sort of format. That's the hockey stick sign. You see the pulvinar nucleus of the thalamus is also abnormal. Now we're seeing bilaterally symmetric abnormalities. At first, you might be thinking about metabolic disorders or toxic exposures, but this has the classic sign for CJD, which is the cortical ribboning, which you see here. There's abnormal cortical diffusion signal. Uh, this will also be abnormal in flare. I just chose to show you diffusion here. 
Now, this is a rapidly progressive prion disease, which will have uh, dementia and abnormal behavior. Most of these cases, about 85% are spontaneous, about 10% of them are acquired, and then some are familial as well, but most are spontaneous. Case five is a 55 year old with tremor, clinical symptoms equivocal for Parkinson's disease. I'm not gonna tell you what kind of scan this is, but hopefully the fact that it's a color map will help you out a little bit. Your choices are Parkinson's disease, medication-induced Parkinsonism, functional movement disorder, or central tremor. So to get this case right, you have to recognize what kind of scan this is. Uh, this is a case of a DAT scan or iodine ioflupane scan. Uh, with Parkinson's disease. Now, what you see is this is an abnormal appearance. We have two round dots in the location of the caudate head. That's abnormal. You should see uptake in the patamen as well. And that gives you a comma appearance, which is the normal appearance. But this is the period appearance, which is abnormal. Now, this is abnormal in cases of Parkinson's disease and the Parkinson Plus syndromes, including PSP and MSA. It is not positive in the other choices, which were vascular Parkinsonism, medication-induced Parkinsonism, and uh, psychogenic or functional diseases. All right, case number six here is a 30-year-old patient, now postpartum day one, with eclampsia and somnolence. We have two images here. This is a flare. This is blood-sensitive imaging, or GRE. Your choices are herpes encephalitis, amniotic fluid emboli, posterior reversible encephalopathy, or PRESS, or medication-related seizure. Well, this is a case of press in a patient with eclampsia. What you see here is abnormal flare in a predominantly subcortical white matter location, a little bit of involvement of the cortex. On the blood sensitive imaging, you'll see that there's a little bit of subarachnoid hemorrhage, which can also be associated with press. Now, press is a disorder of uh, autonomic uh, cerebral vascular autoregulation, where the end capillaries get too much pressure. Uh, this is typically caused by hypertension, but other causes are eclampsia. There's a long list of drugs which are associated with press, and the findings are typically typically what you see in this case here. Case number seven is a 45 year old woman presenting to the ER with headache. You have two post-contrast images. If you're ever wondering if it's post-contrast or not, take a look at the nasal mucosa, which is enhancing here, the pituitary is enhancing. Your choices are subarachnoid hemorrhage, metastatic disease, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, or spontaneous intracranial hypotension. If this is a case of metastatic disease, what you see here is you've got an enhancing nodule within the parenchyma of the parietal lobe, but you also have an abnormal appearance of particularly the posterior fossa and brainstem. You've got abnormal enhancement along the ventral surface of the midbrain and pons. You've got coating of the surface of the cerebellum, this frosting-like coating of the arachnoid membranes. This is from spread of malignant cells directly to the, uh, to the arachnoid. Uh, this, when it's present, it requires whole brain radiation. It can't be treated with uh, focal radiation to the individual sites. Our case eight here, the history is altered mental status. We have a single CT image. Hopefully some of the cases on the exam seem easy to you, and hopefully this is one. Your choices here are subdural empyema, subdural hematoma, epidural abscess, or epidural hematoma. Now, this is a case of subdural hematoma. Uh, the reason why is you have a high density extra axial collection along the right convexity here. You'll see that it both wraps around dural reflections and crosses the likely location of the coronal suture here. So that means it's probably in the subdural space. How do you differentiate between blood or infection? Well, the high density as well as the gradient of blood products here probably makes it more likely to be blood. Now, these have a negative prognosis or have a bad prognosis. The older the patient, if they're on anticoagulation, and the larger the size, the worse the prognosis is. Subdural hematomas have a higher mortality than other traumatic-related hemorrhages, including traumatic subarachnoid and epidural hematoma. Case number nine here, this patient has seizure and a history of HIV. There are four images here, so I'll give you a little bit longer to look at them. You have a flare, a DWI, a post-contrast, and an ADC. Your choices are lymphoma, toxoplasmosis, pyogenic abscess, and cystic sarcosis. 
This is a case of a pyogenic abscess. The reason this is an abscess is you have a peripherally enhancing fluid collection in the parietal lobe. It's centrally non-enhancing or necrotic. It's got a lot of edema around it on flare. Uh, the key finding that you need to recognize here is that on diffusion, it is abnormally bright and on ADC, it is dark. That is in the areas of non-enhancement. So that central area, that is the area of pus and it's the uh, high viscosity material in there that restricts diffusion. Now, what you have to recognize is that those other infections listed, toxoplasmosis, cystocercosis, typically do not have reduced diffusion. Lymphoma, if it does have reduced diffusion, is usually in the area of enhancement. Our final case for this video, case number 10, is a patient with new onset left-sided weakness and fall. You have a single diffusion image. You have a single MIP from an MR angiogram. Your choices are methanol poisoning, arterial infarct, venous infarct, or diffuse hypoxic injury. This is a case of arterial infarct. This is a special sort of infarct called an artery of Percheron infarct, where you get infarction of the bilateral thalami due to occlusion of a single supplying artery. That artery is a variant artery, the artery of Percheron, which comes off a single PCA. Now, what you have in this case, you have abnormal diffusion in the medial thalami bilaterally. You might be thinking about, is this some sort of toxic exposure? Is this from uh, maybe some poisoning or something like that? But on the MR angiogram, you'll see that the PCA is missing. And when you see that, you should be thinking about infarct. Uh, the artery of Percheron likely came off of that proximal PCA and is causing a bilateral infarct there. Those other things are good differential considerations, but it's the MRA that tells you the answer. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed these first 10 cases of the Fast 10 series. We're going to have more cases coming up in this series to help you get ready for your board exam. Uh, hopefully there are things you can review quickly, like right before you go into the exam. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to hit the like button. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe so you get notifications about the rest of the videos. We'll try to have the rest of those cases out shortly. Thanks for tuning in.